So just feel, let, let's, um, let's, let's feel your life, feel your, the time. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> feel, you just feel it, just, you notice how we're always trying to escape out into something? Usually, um, we're trying to escape out into some sort of fixed idea, fixed, some, some idea we have about things. I know the real situation, the problem is X. You know. And so, um, <laughs> I roll. Um, okay, so, um, the real problem is the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it feels like a you know, just stage business, really. Um, yeah, and you know how the mind it compares. The real problem is somebody didn't select me for something. The real problem is somebody else did something. The real problem is uh, somebody doesn't invite me into their circle. The real problem is I wasn't recognized for my ability. And I don't know. What's yours? You know? um, <clears throat> and it's, it's just a feature of the mind. It's a great artist ceaselessly producing material. You know? La- yesterday I did the thing about I'm pecking. Will you, master, will you peck? And the teacher said, uh, I could do that, but will you be alive if I do? You know? But the, there's something tremendous poignancy in, hey, hey, give us a hand here, you know, give us a peck, 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 yeah. And, uh, and I, to, I want to lead into today's comment by just bridging. The, the, somebody asked later, what, what's the, what happens when the student breaks out of the shell? From the point of view of the teacher, what's that? And, uh, the teacher said, good news. And from the point of view of the student, what's that? Revealing her face, revealing his face. You know. And so there's that thing that we're in the life we are and we have to let it have us in order to reveal our face, you know, in order to find out like what's it like to be human, to have these legs and arms and Somebody came to great young men and said, this is an aside, this is an irrelevant aside. <laughs> Somebody came to great young men and um, young men said, well, where have you come from? And he said, and young men said, well, what are they teaching there? And the guy went like this, and young men hit him. And the guy said, what? What did I do for that, to deserve that? And young men went like this. <laughs> and the guy, the guy didn't say anything. You mean hate him again? <laughs> so there's a certain formal elegance, you know, about such matters. But uh, anything will stand for the whole of it. Anything is anything can. Any piece of the universe has the whole universe in it. Any piece of awakening has a whole of awakening. Well, oh, so good to know that now, you know. Um, and, uh, and so today I want to talk about uh, something that comes up for me this time of year. Autumn comes up for everyone. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, And there's a lot about leaves falling off in the tradition because um, there's a lot about it's a metaphor for you know your thoughts the thought you know that your delusions really falling off and you notice that if you sit around long enough you won't be as mad about so many things and you won't be thinks there are things that you'll think are super important you realize they're not and stuff like that right and underneath when when the that falls away, there's a tremendous joy appears. And, uh, 
And anybody who's done a session has probably had a bit of a taste of that joy. But it's a profound thing, and you know, it's worth noticing if it comes by. So, uh, Yun Men, somebody asked, great Yun Men, Cloudgate, the great, one of the greatest masters of all time. When the tree withers and the leaves fall, what's happening? And uh, uh, the golden wind is an old phrase for autumn, you know. And Yun Men said, the golden wind is revealing itself, like the person's face, you know. The golden wind is manifesting itself, is exposing itself. And the whole universe, the body of the universe, is being exposed. And uh, there's a, there's an, you know, I don't know, you don't need to know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, there's a Han Shan, cold mountain, who was this kind of nutty poet who just went up the mountains and didn't want to become a bureaucrat. And... Um, Closed the gate, never intending to open it again, and wrote, you know, poems, famous poems. And, uh, but he said, there's a tree older than the forest that stands in, which some of you have probably worked on as a con, perhaps, you know. And um, it's the same tree, really. You know, it's so ancient that it stands for eternity. And it's kind of bare in a way. It's lost, lost a lot of leaves and it's just exposed. And it's, it's the shape of eternity. So, so Yun Men's referring to that. But he's also referring to autumn. You know, the metaphor he's using is autumn. You know, when the leaves are falling, and whatever autumn is for you, and usually, you know, I was talking today with a friend about, and there's a certain sort of tenderness about autumn, and a slight sorrow mixed in sometimes, you know. We're losing stuff. The first noble truth is very evident. You know? <laughs> and so uh, Tony Hoagland, you know, who was, a, I thought, a wonderful poet and a friend of our us. And he said, autumn is the philosophical season. Mm. He never said anything with a straight face, so you take that out. <laughs> but it kind of is in a way where you get vistas and you see, you know, and you're in the, sitting up on the pass in uh, Sonoma County where we live. The, uh, in autumn you can see, you know, see the bands of clouds separate and the sky There'll be turquoise and and some some strange red and lavenders and things, and you can just feel the revelation. The the, the body of the Dharma is revealing itself. And then you hear the track, big tractors going all night in the vineyards. It's also the body of the Dharma revealing itself. It's autumn. The big tractors with their big eyes are going. Some time ago, within my memory, people decided harvesting was best done at night because the grapes had a more predictable temperature. And I think it was just an annoying idea that the vineyard makers <laughs> thought up, you know, because <laughs> they were thinking of annoying ideas. And uh, I would think, God, now we're really not going to get any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it is a sort of exciting in a way. You know, you've got these big trucks going and the grapes are falling off and sometimes the trucks go off the road and all the grapes disappear down a canyon. <laughs> so it's a time of interest. <laughs> and autumn is the time of interest. There's also the time... The eternal, you know, we feel that quality of the, it, we might say it becomes visible. And uh, and so um, <clears throat> there's a time for, I don't know, I like doing Zazen, you know, I like doing Zazen anyway, but, um, but there's something nice about this autumn session, the harvest session, you know, the spaciousness is very available to us. And I always, uh, when I was first sitting, um, 
or at least first sitting in a temple, I, start, I read a lot about um, people, who, people who tried the method and what had happened, you know, and I felt like I was really only, uh, I wasn't so much interested in the theories or things like that and what people had done. But like, what what did you do? Did you if you worked with a conscience, did you have? And pretty much, that was about what I was interested in. A narrow but forceful field. And um, I remember, and some people had huge experiences where the sky opened and they could feel the laughter of the universe, and they joined in with it. And that 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 kind of thing, which you you might have, is is a thing, or you might have had. And, uh, but then other, I remember one guy, a Japanese guy, I think I read about, who he just went out in the middle of the night from session, he was sitting away after session, and uh, he went after everybody gone to bed, and he went out, and he was just leaning against a tree, and he realized that not only was the tree his friend, but the tree was part of him and he was part of the tree. And so we have that feeling that I'm not really so separate from the universe as I thought. And I think that's one of the profoundly important things about Zen. And one of my, my teachers, a Japanese person, he liked that. Um, if, you, if he asked you one of those questions like, who are you, or one of those sort of zen questions, at least in my case, he liked it. He didn't, I was wondering if I said, well, you know, I'm sad, I'm happy, whatever. And um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so he said, I'm sad, I'm happy. And he, he, liked, he liked the specific that belonged to you. And most Zen teachers do that. Who are you? And you start blathering about where you were born. It's like, please. And so who are you? And, uh, but he liked the tree, the sky, the mountain. And uh, great Ma Zhu, who's been in my mind a lot recently, uh, said, you know, mountain, uh, then Dogen picked this up too later, but the mountains and the great earth, the mountains, the rivers, and the great earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars are not other than your own heart mind. Somebody asks you, what is your heart mind? Do you know? No, good answer. So, um, so I want to talk a bit about, I thought, well, this Cohen about the golden wind is very compelling to people. I'm not sure why, but young teachers always want to talk about on it and things like that. And, um, and so I look back and I've got a lot of talks on it, which I didn't go back and look at. But um, uh, there's this sort of thing you feel kind of safe, you know, I can talk about <laughs> the golden wind blowing the leaves off the trees, you know. Most people can relate to that. And so I thought, well, I wonder why I like it. We have an apricot tree in the, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a friend. You know, it's really interesting with the way a tree can, just the way an animal, a dog can be, a tree can become a friend. And um, has opinions and things like that. <laughs> and um, and, it, it's, and I sort of become quite knowledgeable about the colors it gives and how the, the, um, you know, as it turns, as it yellows out, there's a sort of greeny thing called fallow yellow, according to the painter I live with. And um, it's nice to know that and think, now you're going through your fallow yellow phase to the apricot tree. And I've spent a lot of time sitting under that apricot tree, especially at night, often with a dog. You know, dogs like to sit with you at night. And um, and so there's the intimacy of sitting. Autumn also associated to the intimacy of sitting, for me. Uh, and the color, I was thinking about yellow. Yellow is um, one of those colors that appears in dreams, it appears in my dreams, and also and and so on. And um, it's one of the alchemical stages of color. You know, black. You know when you're thwarted and furious and angry and helpless and feel like you're being badly treated, and that's the dark matter, you know. 
And sometimes it's really necessary to get there. You're really pissed off and the injustice of things and you've been working so hard and nobody recognized you and stuff like that. The dark matter. And you can tell in Zen, sometimes you just have to go into that. So I wanted to talk about the dark a little bit. Really, I want to talk about yellow because it's where I want to get to, but you've got to start with the dark stuff. You know? <laughs> and um, you've got to go down before you can come up. And the, the great path of session, the vessel of session, takes care of that because it always gives you a demon day. And the demon day is usually day two. Bingo. And, um, and so today people came in with, you know, outrage and complaints and um, trepidation and self-doubt and all that stuff. And so, uh, and there's a lot of things you can do about it. Don't worry, it will pass. Um, which is kind of true in a way, this too will pass. But there's something more interesting, this too will be your friend. And, uh, and there are a lot of like recipes in Zen to, well, go into the dark material, you know. But to tell you the truth, I don't ever do anything consistently like that. You know? <laughs> I'm just incapable, you know, I can't, I can't do that. And, um, uh, and in a way, I think everything, and it's not doubt, the Taoist thing is that there's this flow happening and you're, there's a dance and you're being carried, so you don't know what you're going to do. If you're really in your session, it evades your plans because you, if you're making a plan, it's outside. You can tell how it's taking up a large part of your psyche that's really needed for the meditation and for the awakening that you could have if you weren't worrying and planning for an awakening, you know. <laughs> so that sense of being absorbed is profoundly important. And this Cohen is about that, you know. The golden wind has hold of us. And we're in it. And the more you can get into and the less opinions you can have about yourself, well, what other, other people will laugh at me, said the guy yesterday, yeah. Like, so? <laughs> and how do you know? And if they're doing Zen, they're too busy doing their own practice, so who would notice? Mainly people are worried about themselves, not about, they're worried that they look like an idiot and you're judging them. <coughs> but, uh, but, you know, more better, most best, if we just step inside of things, become a friend to the tree, become the stars, and you, you, you can do that, you know. You can't do that by planning to, but if you don't think you're not the tree or the stars, suddenly you are, you know. If you don't think, if you're not holding up the barriers to what your life is, if you don't think being sick ruins your life, if you don't think dying ruins your life, it's all right, really, you know. <laughs> There's nothing that is not part of the path. You don't, and so you don't have to exclude stuff and think, well, I have to keep out all this stuff in my life because I'm ashamed of it or guilty about it or, or just I feel like an idiot, which is a little bit more common, really. Or I'm enraged about it and think people shouldn't have treated me that way, which I don't know whether they should have or not. But they gave you that descent and that downward movement that saturates you and suddenly you're in your life. So that's the black. And I'm, the only reason I mention it, because I just noticed a lot of it flying around today. People get in and I'm dark. <laughs> and um, people get possessed, you know, there'll be arguments about coffee or something. I don't know, coffee. There's something else. The liaisons will find something to argue about. <laughs> this is not the perfect way to do it. So you know what I mean. Or you'll think, well, I know I'm supposed to be in the dojo, but I just really need for my sanity to go outside and listen to the birds and spend time, not meditate so much. There's something wrong and unhealthy about meditating so much. It's exhausting. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that's all demons, right? <laughs> demons all the way down. And the, I suppose the thing I'm saying is there's nothing really wrong with the demons either. You, know? you can't exclude the demons, but to own, if you own them yourself, you're not projecting them on other people and blaming them for them. So in other words, if you do that work, you're not asking other people to do it for you. Uh, it, I mean, do people get that? Is that 
I don't think I'm getting that across, but <laughs> <coughs> next time. Um, it's about as good I can do. Yeah, you know, I have few. The secret, you know, I wrote this thing about Buddha, the myth of the Buddha and so on. It's just in, a, <coughs> in bed in the publishing house right now. But, and one of the things I noticed is I kind of became, to me, fairly clear about the myth is that Mara was lonely and wanted the Buddha, mm -hmm. wanted a friend, you know. And I, don't, I think for Buddha was a little bit approaching autistic, I think, approaching <laughs> but, but, um, but I think in the end maybe he realized that he could be a friend to Mara. You know, the Zen people really got that, you know, the Chan people. You can be a friend to the demons, you know. And I mean, nothing wrong with being autistic either, but Buddha pushed it a bit far. <laughs> and so you can tell that thing about the bonding we there's nothing that we have to exclude that comes out of our hearts. And so Matsu, this is why I'm really interested in Matsu, young men got a lot from Matsu, you know. And um, Matsu said, this very heart-mind, these very thoughts and feelings are Buddha. Uh, no, not these ones. I don't like these ones. So. <laughs> I think the kind of nice ones that probably the head of practice is having. Yeah. <laughs> One of the nice teachers is smiling and having. Now, your thoughts and feelings, this very heart-mind, which is an astonishing thing to think you do not have to divide yourself. Mm -hmm. Not to divide yourself is a marvelous thing, right? You know, when somebody says, I've been very slow to learn this, and mainly I've learned it from women, but um, and somebody says, what are you feeling? I was just taught to lie. <laughs> Which is fine. But then you can't be in the flow of your life when you're doing that. If I can't say, I'm sad, I'm happy, whatever it is, I'm pissed off for. I don't know what I'm feeling, but I don't like it, or whatever it is. Then um, you can tell you can't be in life. And so that's the thing about in Zen is that if you look closer, you'll see Guan Yin is everywhere, like a thousand arms on the altar. And in some, a lot of the koans and riding a buffalo up there. And it's because of that element of we can bear who we are, we can bear what we're feeling and we can bear what other people are feeling and we can bear to love each other through that. Uh, I don't know if I'm making sense to people again, but I think I am. And so that there's a certain sort of gravitas and patience that about when the tree's withering and the leaves are stripping off about that, so that you can actually really have the, revela the revelation, the manifestation of the Dharma. And so I wanted to, I don't know, is that in this case, apart from the really beautiful... Um, it said that Buddha has no country. There's a comment that goes, uh, someone asks, what if you sweep away the dust and meet the Buddha? In other words, what if the, all the leaves fall and the revelation has happened and you meet the Buddha? And the teacher said, um, something kind of, your practice doesn't stop there. You have to brandish your sword, otherwise you'll be, you know, there's cutting off any delusions that come. And then the person decided to get a second opinion, which students tend to do, and, um, uh, and went to another teacher who said, Buddha has no country. Where will you meet her? If you sweep away the dust and meet the Buddha. Buddha has no country. Where will you meet her? To know this, this is um, Dong Shan, to know this and yet be ab able to not remain here, to be an example for beings, to inspire and lead them. Unify and teach them is called extending your hands. And you can tell that that's part of it, isn't it? We have to extend our hands. You know? We have to help each other through the passages. My kind of, I'm for that, you know? And... Uh, but otherwise, uh, the, the case 27, I found remarkably short of interesting things to talk about. 
apart from how its effect on me. You know. <laughs> but in a way, that's what a con's for. You can't get a purchase on it except through your own awakening. And the the, the poet pointed out the question is in the question is in the source. How is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? The question reveals the response, you know. The golden wind is revealing itself, manifesting itself. The body of form is revealing itself. And so what I, the other thing, I, I think I have a little bit of time here. What I want to do is, um, I want to read a few poems that are either in some way, I think, yeah, related to this. Most likely. This is Adam Zagajewski who died. It's another one of those great, amazing Polish poets. Who, one of the mysteries of the universe, why are there so many great Polish poets? Um, but, you know, here we are. And uh, this is one called Impossible Friendships. And it's a bit like what happens. For example, with someone who's lo- who no longer is, who exists only in yellow letters. It's a very autumnal thing, isn't it? Yeah. Or long walks beside a stream whose depths hold hidden porcelain cups. And the talks about philosophy with a timid student or the postman. A passerby with proud eyes whom you'll never know. An impossible friendship. Yeah. A passerby with proud eyes whom you'll never know. Friendship with this world ever more perfect, if not for the salty smell of blood. The old man sipping coffee in Saint-Lazare, who reminds you of someone. Faces flashing by in local trains. The happy face of travellers headed perhaps for a splendid ball or a beheading. (laughs) And friendship with yourself, since after all you do. You do not know who you are. Possible friendship. So I thought, you know, in a way, that's what we do in Zen. So here's my apricot, one of my apricot poems, called Asking the Apricot Tree. At dawn, still awake, I asked the apricot tree, did you dream last night? I did. I dreamed leaves and the moon. I dreamed I flew. What the apricot tree said to my impossible friend said. It's another yellow one. Golden, this is more summer, but you know, you've got to take what you can get in poetry. <laughs> Golden orioles were, were eating the olive blossoms. It's kind of a nice thing, because you don't want to lose the olive blossoms, but you want to have the orioles. <laughs> <laughs> Golden orioles. Look, there's an oriole. It's eating the olive blossoms. <laughs> But you just have to let the universe go ahead with that process, you know, you feel like it's nothing to do with you. Golden Orioles were eating the olive blossoms. Now they are hiding in the yellow flowers. Hay bales are waiting at leisure in the field. The eye of the big tractor shines all night in the vineyard. The name thief came in the night and we woke blinking and found that we were happy. That's my report. (laughs) This is more like an impossible friendship again. The crane flies a long way to speak with the moon, returns to the lake's edge all night, sharing news with the other cranes. The leaves, the reeds listen and pass it on in the dark. That's the Dharma. That's how the Dharma gets passed on. The crane flies to the moon and gets it and comes back and tells the other cranes and eventually, you you know, you hear it, they're flying, you'll hear them calling, then you wake up. See, it's good to know how you get the Dharma. (laughs) Yellow again. My friend died, I'm reaching out for yellow for finches in my chest. My last high school friend that was. This is a great... Poet is not terribly much known, unless by poets, but called Paul Celan. And uh, the translation is by Pierre Joris. I think this poem was written in German. And uh, it's called Corona. 
Autumn is eating a leaf from my hand. We are friends. We are picking time out of a nut. We teach it to run and time rushes back to its shell. Mm -hmm. In the mirror, it's Sunday in dreams. People sleep. The mouth tells the truth. My eye descends to the sex of my loved one. We gaze at each other. We whisper our darkness. We love one another like poppies and memory. We sleep like wine in a seashell, like the sea in the moon's bloody rays. Embracing, we stand by the window and people look up from the street. It's time that they knew. It's time that the stone grew accustomed to blooming. blooming. It's time that the stone grew accustomed to blooming. That unrest formed a heart. It's time it was time. It is time. One of Rilke's often translated and famous um, Autumn. The leaves are falling, falling from far up. As if orchards, orchards, so falling from far up, if, as if orchards were dying high in space. Each leaf falls as if it were motioning, no. And tonight the heavy earth is falling away from all the other stars in, its, in the loneliness. And tonight the heavy earth is falling away from all the other stars in the loneliness. We're all falling. This hand here is falling. And look at the other one. It's in them all. And yet there's someone whose hands infinitely calm hold up this falling. There's a more, often more probably better known, a real autumn poem. Lord, it is time the summer was immense. Stretch out your shadow on the sundial's face. And on the meadows let the wind go loose. On the meadows let the wind go loose. Command the last fruits to be full in time. Grant them even two more southerly days. Press them toward fulfillment soon and chase the last sweetness into the heavy wine. Whoever has no house now will build none. Who is alone will stay long alone, will lie awake and read and get long letters written. Trees that follow up and down will wander restless when the leaves are driven. Who has no house now will build none. That was a Felstina's translation. Everybody has translated that poem. But. And autumn is also the time when things go down. So the black, when the demons come on, that's not wrong in autumn, you know, Halloween and things like that. Or do they come on in your own heart and you're very disturbed and opposed to yourself? Be gracious about that, you know. It's the kind of shit that happens. <laughs> And uh, it's life, you know, and so that turmoil, as well as the peace of autumn, there's a certain sort of letting go and sorrow and things like that. But also it's just the flow of the Tao. So I personally enjoy autumn, but I can feel that, that tristesse, you know, that the tear in autumn, you know. The tear and the tear. And, yeah, and so that makes me think of, of his ode and Persephone, of course, the, goes one of the symbols of autumn or metaphors of autumn is the goddess goes down into Hades to. Um, and as Mitchell has something, something that leaves the brown, and my old husband's coming round, take me back to Hades town. <laughs> <laughs> ode to Persephone. As a, for a long time as a kid, I thought it was called Persephone. <laughs> uh, ode to Persephone, that which is not to be excluded. Thick summer's sprung a leak, and Mr. Antlers is eating the tomatoes, keeping a wary eye and readying his shiny hooves. The color yellow thinks of me, thinks heartbreak and memory polished like cellos, thinks longing, thinks stumbling and regret, 
thinks persimmon-colored avenues solitary and complete, and soothing palms and drowsy, drowsy flagstones. The collie dog picks persimmons in the morning fog, stretches out before a tablecloth of red and yellow leaves, and watching me without comment, tucks in. The hermit thrush sings till following instructions the small birds leave into the transparency. The blue is palest at the horizon, a cool wind full of voices rises as of the sea, and at night the owl. Solitude pools around the chairs, the table, the worn floorboards with lotuses painted on them. The cat that sits on the girl, the girl, who, the cat that sits on the girl, the girl who sits on the couch, the manga that is in her hands, the girl allows only rice crackers, lettuce and water, pushes the lettuce around on her plate, becoming less visible as the famine inside pulls her down into dim paths. She is hardly aware of me walking beside in a darkness we share, trudging through alleys that keep coming into existence and disappearing. Always we are at the edge of what we know, and always with surprise at how we were distracted and forgot what we were seeking. I long, I wish that the spirit that has got that girl release her. Fervently I long for that. I long to walk quietly upward, murmuring together, taking in the green delight, blossoms and finches' eyes in the budding tree. The travelling eagles turn and turn among the haze of bare vines. The stag is still and shimmering. My heart descends as the leaves descend. There are secret gates and branching corridors. O oh, muse, keep open the paths of return for her, for me. That poem was about not excluding anything. And I'll give you one more, which is... Um, and this is one, I, I stood having these dreams, I was sick, and uh, I asked to... Um, I was meditating a lot, and uh, I... Um, I thought, well, I better talk to my sickness, you know. And uh, and somebody I just didn't like at all appeared in my dream. You know, I was about to tell him something rude and Australian. <laughs> and, uh, and then I realized, hang on, I asked to talk to this guy. And so I, I said, oh, I want to talk to you. And then he appeared successively in more interesting and companionable forms. So mm -hmm. the thing about Mara, you know, the Lord of Death and, and Buddha became kind of personal for me. And uh, this is called Citrinitas, is an alchemical stage of yellow. It's a like greeny yellow you see in the leaves as right now. The yellow mood in autumn. Are these leaves falling on my father's hands? It's the irrevocable season. Gods are coming and going in the side glance, but when I turn to look, branches and fog. A quick prayer to the newly sunk new moon and bright Jupiter, Mars, very red tonight. Orion, the Pleiades, so relaxing to stroll through the ancient, narrow, cobbled streets. Un unsortable autumn. Here I can rest without compare as never before. Step through the ogive arches, signifying solitary paths, loneliness, perhaps unlooked for help. Perhaps loneliness, perhaps unlooked for help. The mandala that holds us all. Sinking down, sinking into a pile of items still arriving, leaf crinkled, rain softened, West wind delivered, burnished, auburn, russet, rust and brown. West wind delivered, burnished, autumn, russet, rust and brown. Some things are falling apart like an old felt hat. They have the taste of an old felt hat. 
I too am falling and happy with that. And now the sea fog off the Farallones. At the edge of the pines, my father strolls. I wish I'd known you more, he says. I dream he stands beside the Lord of Death, admiring the old black luxury car. The car that receives so many, polished and gleaming on the outside. Inside there is a hazy infinity of seating. The Lord of Death's assistant offers me a lift in his lesser car, as if to a party, I thank him and decline. <laughs> I have a deep unspoken feeling, though, for the spaces between things, something found in Sanskrit words, practicing, practicing deep prajna paramita. Patches of amber dream and the taste of the last apples, olives harvested and persimmons to come, infinite transformation of yellow and green. Life after life I have come here, through whatever gates open by themselves, glimpsing again that great Lord, so well dressed. In my dreams of Lord of Death is extremely well dressed. You know. it makes me lift my game. You know. <laughs> glimpsing again that great Lord, so well dressed. Tonight in winter coats with the collars turned up, companionably we stand beside, we watch the season. We stand beside, we watch the season turn. There's that. And there's just one more, which is from great Louise Gluck. I, I, I may have read this on Sunday, I think, but it's already Thursday, so there you go. <coughs> Crossroads. Crossroads, Louise Gluck. My body... Now that we will not be travelling together much longer, I begin to feel a new tenderness toward you. Very raw and unfamiliar, like what I remember of love when I was young. Love that was so often foolish in its objectives, but never in its choices, its intensities. It's never in its choices. This intensity is too much demanded in advance, too much that could not be promised. My soul has been so fearful, so violent. Forgive its brutality. As though it were that soul, my hand moves over you cautiously, not wishing to give offence, but eager finally to achieve expression as substance. So you got what's happening. Her soul is apologizing to the body for having ignored it so much and forced it into all sorts of situations. <laughs> Moves over you cautiously, not wishing to give offense, but eager finally to achieve expressionist substance. It is not the earth I will miss, it is you I will miss. Another impossible friendship. So, um, so I think, what do I want to say here? You know, it's, um, what am I saying here? <laughs> um, when the tree withers and the leaves fall. The golden wind is revealing itself. The body is exposed and the golden wind is manifesting itself. It's here with us. We are it. Thank you very much.